Hey everybody, welcome to the press. Welcome to our final show of the week. We're going to talk about the events that are not the Valspar Championship being played this week in Major Golf. I'm Ryan Balangi. Thanks for being here. Today we're going to talk about the LPGA event, the Fur Hills Savory Park Championship out in the Los Angeles area. Talk briefly about the Singapore Classic, the Porsche Singapore Classic on the DP World Tour. And then I want to get into the Masters a little bit. Just some lines, some thoughts about where we are in the market, and, and just some things to consider uh, in terms of history and, and maybe some good bets to make based on that. So first, let's start with the LPGA. We'll do the LPGA and the DP World Tour in about five minutes, and then we'll move on. The Savory Pac Championship is this week. It's played at Palos Verdes Golf Club in Palos Verdes Estates, California, it's about 45 minutes outside of the outskirts of Los Angeles. It's the third year for this tournament. It's kind of born out of covid when you couldn't have events in the fall, the winter portion, the Asian swing, they were still being held up by COVID restriction over in Asia and travel restriction overall. And they created this event at to kind of create a, an L.A. double because they play at Wilshire Country Club as well. And they had this tournament. So Marina Alex won the first year, Ronin Yim won the second year. So she's the defending champion. You got a pretty good field here. It's the first full field event since January Nellie Corda is top of the table, 10 to 1. Brooke Henderson, 16 to 1. Janet Lynn, 20 to 1. Patty T, Patty Tavish Hanneket is 22 to 1. I would probably look at betting her and Nasa Hataoka. Nasa's played very well here at this tournament over the last couple of years. I would very much consider her. Rose Zhang's 25 to 1. I think I'm going to hold off because I feel like she's still doing school stuff. This is basically a break from school for her. That's kind of weird. Uh, she's in a weird holding pattern. So I would, I would maybe hold off on the hype for her until summer. Wait through that. Uh, the school getting worked out. Uh, Charlie Hall's 25 to 1, I think, is worth a look this week. He's been playing very, very well in limited action on the LPGA Tour, but she's also been playing well on the Ladies European Tour. They had the Aramco Team Series in F Florida last week. She played well there. 25 to 1, I think, is a good price, up to world number seven at the moment. Um, Yuka Sasso is kind of interesting to me. I would probably skip her. I would like GA Shin at 35 to 1. She doesn't play a whole lot in the U.S. anymore, but still a tremendous, tremendous player. Allison Lee playing very well on the LET, underrated, into the top 20 in the world. Playing well, 35 to 1, I think is worth a look too. Hannah Green's 45 to 1. I, for the life of me, do not understand why she does not get more love. She's won this the event out at Wilshire before. She's won already this season. She's a great ball striker. I, I would stick with her here at 45 to 1. Going down the board a little bit more, just a couple of people I want to highlight uh, that might be good longer shots this week. Alexandra Forsterling is 70 to 1. You probably don't know that name. And she's played a lot on the Ladies European Tour, has won three or four times in the last year. She's dominating over there. And that doesn't always translate from the LET to the LPGA, but she just played well in American soil in the Aramco series. Just won again. She's playing great golf. 70 to 1 seems like a massive mismatch given the way that she's played over the last 12 months, particularly so far this year. Danielle Kang maybe an interesting longer shot bet. She's played well at this venue. She has struggled the last year and a half. She's 110 to 1. I mean, at one point in time, she was number one in the world. So she's fallen down quite a ways. I would also look at Ashley Buhai here. Kind of her game fits what this golf course is about, which is accuracy, keeping the ball in play. 90 to 1, I think, is worth a look. Um, that, that's probably about it for me on this. Keep it super limited. Maybe one other person uh, to mention, Anna Pelez Trevino. Again, another European tour, Lee's European tour player just over here for that Aramco event, 180 to 1. Good player. I will one more time talk about Stephanie Kiriku from Australia, 180 to 1. Good player. I think she has the capacity to win a tournament like this. So I would look at her as well. Now, let's go to the DP World Tour. They are in Singapore for the Porsche Singapore Classic. Uh, Porsche used to be a sponsor of an event in Germany. Now they're a sponsor of this event. Hey, whatever. Works out. Names this week from the PGA Tour. Shane Lowry, he's 10 to 1, been playing well. You know, no offense to Shane Lowry, he's been playing great, but I think he's played a lot of golf. He's traveled a lot. No thank you. Paul Casey, 12 to 1, playing okay on live. Played well in the Hong Kong tournament. So he's been playing well in Asia. He does have a good track record in Asia. I think it's worth a look. He doesn't win often enough for me to bet him at 12 to 1, but maybe if you catch him at a bad start live, get him at 20 25, I'd be considering him. Rasmus Hoygaard playing great. Pretty much anywhere I've seen him this year, 14 to 1, worth a look. Matthew Pavon is somehow 16 to 1. Been great on the PGA Tour this year. Already a winner this year on the PGA Tour. 
I think he's worth a look at that number. Go down a little bit more. Jordan Smith at 25 to 1, I would consider. Xander Lombard played well in this event last year, 35 to 1. I've seen him other places a little bit higher. Might be able to find him 40. This is on DraftKings. Might be able to find him other places. Jesper Svensson's been playing pretty okay, 55 to 1. Alejandro Del Rey, who came off of the, cha- or, excuse me, the Challenge Tour, played well here last year when he came off that tour, 35 to 1. A little too short for me, but maybe worth a consideration. I'm going to throw out Mateo Manacero as well. 75 to 1. Just won his last time out in the Johnson Workwear Open in South Africa. First win in 11 years. And you, you're going to tell me that that's, that cul- that's going to be the culmination, that he's not going to do anything from here. I think he can do something here. 75 to 1, I think, is worth a look. That's a good price for a guy who just won just a few weeks ago. I think that's worth a look as well. Otherwise, I'm going to stay pretty well away on this tournament. Maybe Jaden Shaper at 130 to 1. I don't know if his game's going to translate very well. Same thing with uh, with Matthew Southgate at 150 to 1. But this will be a pretty short week for me on the DP World Tour card. Now, to the reason probably most of you are listening. Masters, all right? The market's going to tighten up. It's already tightened up for Scotty Scheffler. This is now the time to kind of find those potential value bets out there. You know, in recent memory, we haven't had a whole lot of surprises in this tournament. You've had good players, maybe no more than 50 to 1, get there in the end. And what you need to look out for is really short-term form. And I don't mean short-term how we talk about the PJ Tour, like last 10 events played. I mean like the last three months. So over the last 14, 15 years, basically the only players who have a chance to win this tournament are players who are averaging one and a half strokes gained in total per round in the preceding three months. So basically the first three months of the year before the Masters. And other than those players, you don't need to think about anybody else. You can go find someone who has a good finish. If you're playing DFS, you're playing a derivative bet, top 20, 40, make cut, whatever. Have a great time. But if we're talking about winners. That's what we're talking about here. And those are the players and the only players we need to look for. So if you're looking at this, we're trying to pull together this data. So I made kind of a temporary tool over at uh, golfnewsnet.com, one of our data tools behind the scenes. And I'm looking at the last, basically since February is the, is the real data. February, strokes gain, tee to green, 1.5 strokes more per round. Who are those players? And let's get on them. Now, there aren't many of them, right? That, that's very limiting because it's been a weird year, right? Not everyone's played great. So you don't have many players. Here are the guys. Will Zalatoris, Jordan Spieth. Roger Sloan's not in this tournament. Scotty Scheffler. And Tony Finau. And that's it. So not many got, right? Now, does that mean that's the kind of be-all, end-all? No, right? That's a 10-year trend, 8 of the last 10, eight, it's 9 of the last 11, something like that. I mean, it's a great run, right? But you, you have to... They're just things that, that tell you, right? They're, they don't have to be perfect. So of those guys, you know, Jordan Spieth. 18 to 1. Will Zalatoris, 18 to 1. Maybe you like those guys. Both of those guys have a propensity for this golf course. There's a reason to like them. Tony Finau has not played particularly well this year, at least so it seems, but the data is pretty good. 40 to 1. I think he's worth a look. So you can try to kind of sort out players based on that. Now, if you kind of loosen up the criteria a little bit and maybe you make it a little bit lighter than 1.5 strokes per round, maybe you get some more results than that. And, and I'm sure you can come across players like, you know, Justin Thomas, 1.12. Nick Taylor, 1.2 in terms of strokes gained tee to green. Uh, trying to find more people on a, like a live data set is not necessarily the easiest thing to do. But you could go down this data set that we've created, 1.374. Torbjorn Olesen, playing great, great golf, 1.229. Andrew Novak, not in the tournament. 1.260. Keith Mitchell, man, that guy's playing pretty okay. Deki Matsuyama, 1.266. He's right in there. Someone to consider. So if you, if you kind of go through this list and start thinking about players to like, Jake Knapp's in there, 1.133. Not bad at all. 1.123. Siwoo Kim, actually playing pretty okay. Doesn't look like it from the results, but maybe an interesting guy to consider. 1.382. Tom Hoagie, how about that? That's an interesting one. 1.426. Not in the field. Oh, that was kind of interesting. Limited starts. Doug Gimmon there, 1.344. Not in the field yet. It's got to do something special. 
but he would be a guy to like. And then there aren't, you know, there aren't many players who are doing this this year. Uh, above one, Parker Cootie not in the field, right? You're trying to go over these guys who are, it, who are quality players playing quality opponents getting into this field. There aren't many. There's not much to work with. So I would strongly urge you to think about this, but be this is an, a call to be particularly selective in when you're thinking about players to like. And you shouldn't like Rory McIlroy because he's .593. Like that, you know, combined, that's that's bad, right? We don't want that. Maybe you look at a Wyndham Clark. Well, people like Wyndham Clark because he's played well in these tough tournaments. And if you look at it overall, he's pretty close, 1.036. Someone to absolutely like. So maybe we loosen a little bit to a little bit more than one stroke. And you start to bring in guys like that. And then you got to think about live guys, right? Joaquin Neiman's 22 to 1. Okay. I can consider that. I'd love him closer to 30, but he's playing great golf and you're not going to capture that data particularly well. So maybe that's someone to, to look at. Maybe you want to look at someone with a little bit longer odds, like a Sahit Thigala. He's got a lot of imagination. Brian Harmon's a guy I'm going to bet for the Masters. He's 55 to 1. A lot of people love Brian Harmon. But in the main, not gaining a whole lot of strokes T to green because his year was not off to a good start. So he has you know, turned that around very rapidly in the one start we see him. So it, it's going to be difficult to predict players that you're really going to like uh, going into this. It, it just is. I mean, maybe Nick Taylor's your, I, I love betting Nick Taylor, 100 to 1 long shot. Torbjorn Olsen, 110 to 1 long shot. It's been a weird year, so it feels like one of two things is going to happen. Either Scotty Scheffler is going to win this thing, or someone weird is going to win it. But I, I think the end result takeaway here from this discussion is Start setting some rules. Start trying to find some guys you might like that have some value. They don't have to fit this criteria. They don't have to fit what I've talked about here is kind of my guiding star. You can bet whatever you want, of course. But I would tell you, I would urge you to look at that. I would also urge you to look at par 5 scoring this year. If you can kill the par 5s, you've got a really good chance at Augusta National. If you're not playing well in the par 5s, then you're going to struggle, right? Uh, it, it doesn't usually work out if you don't play well on the par fives because at best you're going to get about to a couple under on the par threes and you want to be a little bit better than even you know, even one under one over on the par fours because the par fours are really hard at Augusta National. You you make up your ground on the par fives and Patrick Reed did it the best I've ever seen it. He was what, 13, 14 under in the par fives in four rounds, he gets 16 cracks at it. Very impre- you don't have to be that good, but you've got to be close to double digits under par on the par fives and then find a way to play the remaining 56 holes of the event in even to under par. If you can do that, you've got a really good chance to win. I think this is going to be a strange year. I think we are going to get some weird results. I do like a Brian Harmon at 65 to 1, even though the data is not showing it right now. I can see why you would want to bet a Sahit Thagala. I do like the idea of Tony Finau playing better than it looks. I'm going to go in and get invested in him. I do like what Justin Thomas is doing, even though that miscut of the player is going to make you think. Will Zalatoris looked like a pumpkin at the at the players, putted very poorly. If he's going back down, kind of the, back to the mean of his poor putting, then you're going to be out in that guy pretty quickly. I don't think you're going to see much of Will Zalatoris between now and the Masters, so that action probably won't change much. You can just kind of decide if you feel it that week. Jordan Spieth, you're going to see the Texas Open, so you might get one more crack at him. Hopefully he doesn't win and kind of destroy your chance of, of doing well. He'll play this week as well, so maybe you start to see him play well on day one. You don't want to bet him this week. You want to bet him at 18-1 to 1 for the Masters. You don't want to bet him what he is now, which is like 16-17-1. to 1. For this tournament, you want to bet the one that he's done it, you know? Uh, I, I, and he's done it in, in his book, but I think it's better to have this ticket. And then you can have something to play with in terms of hedging, having other tickets down the line. So that's what we're trying to do this to set up for getting values and having the ability to hedge later, move your way to another potential bet that you can guarantee yourself profit. So plenty to think about, but at least want to kind of put some numbers out there, put some names into your brain to think about for the masters. That's going to do it for us today and for the week on the press. Thanks so much for listening. I know this is a shorter show. I'm trying to make these Wednesday shows a little bit quicker, right to the point, get through everything, and then get you on your way with your day. 
If you have any questions, Ryan at thegolfnewsnet.com, Twitter threads, X, Instagram, and Blue Sky at Ryan Balangi, and on Facebook and YouTube at Ryan Balangi Golf. Golf News Net's on all those services at Golf News Net. You can join Golf News Net for $40 a year. You get access to all of our tools, every piece of data that we talk about here on this show, in depth, for $40 a year. It's a great deal. We'll be back next week. Hope you have a great winning week, and we will talk to you next time on The Press.